In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this walk cycle animation in Photoshop and After Effects. This video is in collaboration with Sandro Ryback, an amazing designer and illustrator based in Germany. Now, I absolutely love his designs, his color palettes, and his composition. And of course, that beautiful grain that regulars of my channel know that I'm obsessed with. Sandro sent me this design as a Photoshop file. And the first thing that I got to find out was how he does that grain. And by looking closer, we can see that it looks like this was designed with the dissolve blending mode, either set onto the brush or onto the layer. And because his canvas size is so large, this is 3,200 pixels wide, it doesn't look so pixely like it does when it's up close. When we zoom out, it looks nice and really natural and textured. So I figured I'm gonna need to animate a bunch of this frame by frame, especially the legs, the cloak, and probably the fire. I chose to animate this in Photoshop so that I can use that same technique to get this grain with the dissolve blending mode using a brush, rather than animating this in Adobe Animate, which is also a good choice for animating frame by frame. And I'll be using the plugin AnimDesin2, which gives us this toolbar down here, which has a bunch of helpful animation features like onion skins. Let's start with the walk cycle. Now, a full walk cycle can take hours to explain in detail and certainly a lifetime to master. It is one of the hardest things to animate. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an overview of my process that I use to take some of the headache out of that and really simplify it. Let's start by looking at the Richard Williams walk cycle from his awesome book, The Animated Survival Kit, which I highly recommend. And in that, the walk cycle is broke down into four key poses. We have our contact pose, our down pose, our passing pose, our up pose, and then the contact pose again, which is the same as the first one, but with the right and left leg swapped. So we really need to figure out these four poses. We're gonna be animating on twos on a 24 frames per second timeline. So four poses, plus we're gonna have four in-betweens as well, extra drawings in between each of these poses. So we're gonna end up with eight poses, which means eight drawings across 16 frames, each pose lasting two frames long. So I like to start with just the contact and the passing pose. So we only need to figure out two positions. Now we've already got the contact pose, which was provided in the design by Sandro. And I've got that lasting for eight frames here down in our timeline. And then I've drawn our passing pose, which splits up our 16 frames into two eight frame poses. Eight frames of contact, eight frames of the passing pose. Now the passing pose, we've got our hips raised a little and this back leg is sort of passing our front leg. And we've got our back leg passing our front leg soon to become the front leg itself. And the contact pose, of course, is where the front leg first makes contact with the ground. Now let's play this animation with just those two frames. Now with just two poses, we can already feel the animation. Now. It's not smooth, this is not perfect by any means, it will get a lot more detailed, but it's just enough to get the feel of the motion and the feel of the movement and the character of the walk. And what's really beneficial about this is that if this isn't working, it's really easy to adjust these two poses. We're not having to adjust eight drawings or even a whole bunch of rigged keyframes in After Effects. This is why I much prefer animating walk cycles or any other character animation really in frame by frame, even if it's just a reference for me to clean up in After Effects later because we've essentially drawn four lines and it feels like we've made a lot of progress. Character animation in particular can be a long, hard process. So it's good to celebrate these little wins. So once we're happy with this, and we're kind of happy with how these two poses feel, we need to add the next two poses. These are our down pose and our up pose. In the down pose, the hips are lowered and the front leg bends, the back leg lifts up, and in the up pose, the leg touching the ground kind of lifts up, raising the hips, and that other leg swings forward, ready to become the contact pose. Here's the down pose I've done for this character. It's not too dissimilar for the contact pose because in this contact, our character is pretty low to the ground. That was one of the things I was concerned with when I first saw this design. How am I gonna do all the different poses? Having a down pose and then an up pose as well with this character walking so low to the ground. But let's play this back and see how it looks. Now I was really happy with these. It definitely seems like he's sort of low and lurching to the ground, but I definitely think it works. Getting these four poses to look right and work together is the hardest part by far. But everything from here is all downhill and you're definitely gonna get better with experience. I would definitely try animating lots of walk cycles, maybe with different leg lengths and just with stick figures like I'm doing here. And definitely consider the character design. So here I'm being pretty loose with the leg length. The legs in the passing pose look probably a little bit shorter than they are in the contacts, especially this front one which stretches out all this way, but you're going to need to adjust that to suit your character. And then on this next layer, I've split up these frames again to create an in-between drawing between each of these poses. So now we've got eight drawings and our walk cycle looks much smoother. Once I was happy with that, I turned the transparency down and then drew over the top on a new layer 
the pants, adding some width to the legs and adding the feet as well. Very closely referencing our original stick figure walk cycle. And now the rough animation for our legs are done. A quick word about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. With so much to explore, create real projects and learn from the best in the industry. I've been using Skillshare as a way of kind of productively fending off boredom and a bit of escapism from the world at the moment. Here are some classes that I've been watching and getting enormous inspiration from lately. Animating Emotions Using Movement to Convey a Feeling by Claudia Salas, a phenomenal animator who you should definitely know and follow if you're a fan of this channel. I'm a huge fan of his, you'd love his work. Something new I've been dipping into is Storytelling in Film Using Cinematography to Convey Emotion by Joe Simon. This is something I'd kind of like to learn to add a bit more production value to this channel eventually, but uh, don't hold me to that though. A Skillshare annual subscription is less than $10 a month and for unlimited access to their top tier classes from such amazing artists and industry experts, I don't think you can get better value anywhere. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Then we started animating the cloak, which is a similar process, but there are no set key poses or cloak cycle to help us. But we do have the wave principle, which describes soft objects moving in a wave, like water, hair, clothing. And I started simply on this main section of cloak here, focusing on this bottom edge and making sure that moves in a wave motion and loops nicely. And I'm just working on four poses at the very beginning, just four drawing. And I'm animating it moving upwards as well to match the hips in our walk cycle as they are pushed upwards. After animating the cloak basics, on a new layer, I added a bit more cloak detail, the little back side of the cloak, which you can see in a few frames here, and the front side as well. Once I was happy with that, it's time to add the in-between frames. So now we've got twice the amount of frames and it's much smoother. And here I highlighted this bottom edge of the cloak because it was really important for me to get this looking right. If this edge of the cloak doesn't look good, the rest of the cloak won't look good. So I paid particular attention to this. And that was the roughs of our cloak done. Now onto our fiery comet. For the fire on the comet, I animated each flame one by one using a very similar process to the one I showed in my flame animation tutorial. And then one by one, I added flames to this comet. And there's a total of six frames of animation in each one. So a bit less than our walk and cloak cycle. And I was pretty happy with how this flame design translated to frame by frame. I animated the snake in the same way as well, remembering the wave principle and marking some guides. So the front, the back and the eyes all stayed aligned in the same position. Now this is probably faster than a snake would normally move. Not that I spent an awful lot of my time monitoring snakes timings. Those were, those were all rumors, but I did want to match the character's speed as he moved. Otherwise in the final animation, our character should be running much further ahead than our snake. The last thing to animate roughly frame by frame was this teardrop. Now the design has a single tear, which adds a lot of backstory. Why are they crying? Has something awful happened? Is something awful about to happen? Very good storytelling, a classic. So I first started off with that tear welling up in the eye. Then once it builds up enough weight, it drips down the face and then it clings to the bottom of the face because a surface tension is holding it attached to the head. Before that weight builds up, and it's enough to fly off into the air. And I think I've got just about three frames of it flying before it sort of disintegrates into the ether. So with all of our rough animation done, it's time to move on to clean up. Cleaning up frame by frame animation can be a very tedious process, but it also can be very meditative. So put on a podcast or audible, perhaps a nice radio play or, or great wartime speeches, whatever your persuasion. And on a new layer, I select a hard brush and just outline our rough animation, trying to keep it as tight as possible. And I just do the outline first because in another pass, I'm gonna go over and fill them in just using the fill bucket over here on the left. And then repeat that process for all animations that need to be filled. And I separated the cloak into two layers, one for the back, which is in black, and one for the front in this teal. Then came the shading. Now this was new to me, adding texture frame by frame. Normally I do that in After Effects with looping textures, which you can find a whole lot of tutorials for on this channel. But I focused on the legs and the cloak because they are each gonna need different shading every single frame because they move so much. So my process to shade in the cloak was to duplicate my cleaned up cloak layer, open up all my frames here on the right in my layer panel, choose a nice soft round brush. I use the default one, which is fine. So we get a nice gradient as we draw and then set the blending mode up here to dissolve to match Sandro's wonderful design. And then we're also gonna lock the alpha channel, which you can do right over here in the layer panel. 
So when we do that, everything we draw is restricted to what's already been drawn. We can't draw in any of the transparent areas. So I would draw the shading over the top of the cloak, which is the shadow of the head. And then I would also draw in this sort of underside, this sort of ripple where our cloak is further away from us and doesn't catch as much light. Then I press Alt on my keyboard, select the eyedropper tool, select this teal color, and then go back in and just create a bit of rim lighting on the edge of the cloak here. And maybe adjust this shape to get it to feel natural. And then repeated that for every frame, checking to make sure there's a smooth motion between all of them. And did that for the legs as well. So that was everything we needed to animate frame by frame. So I went and deleted all of our other unnecessary layers like our roughs and our cleanups without shading. So I was ready to import this PSD into After Effects. I imported both PSDs, Sandro's original design here, which has all of our assets inside it that are all static. And then imported the PSD we were just working in, which has all of our frame by frame assets in there. So first we need to loop a bunch of these assets because they are all at different lengths. My process for that is pretty basic. I select all of the frames that we have, I duplicate them with Control or Command D, move them up the layer stack, and then add them to the sequence, essentially copying and pasting them until the end of our timeline. It is by no means an elegant solution, but it does work all of the time. So you can't go wrong there. Then I went and replaced our static assets from our design PSD with our animated frame by frame ones. And I've got our head and our arms moving slightly and with a bit of a rotation on the head as well. So it swings back and forth as it's walking. Then of course added our flower stem with our comet attached. And if we look inside our flower stem pre-comp, we can see I've got it bending with the CC bended effect over here. A very easy effect to use, nothing crazy here. And then just aligned our comet's head using some position keyframes to give it a bit of a weight as it bounces as our character's walking. And now with our character animation done, all that was left was to add our snake here and then add some pots moving in parallax at the start just by moving their position. And we're done. This took about six to seven hours, which I think is really good if I can get one of these done in a day. This one I'm particularly proud of, especially that textured cloak. You're definitely gonna be seeing me use a lot of that technique and a lot of my animations. And on this channel, I've got a whole series of process videos where I break down how I animated the work of other amazing artists. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I'll think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.